The Red Bar News, Algeria 1857. This is a cooperative and solo friendly game about the Berber resistance uh, in Algeria in, well, 1857 against the French forces. The players will control groups of rebels uh, consisting of both actual fighters and civilians supporting them. And I have to tell you, this game is really remarkable in the way in which it represents the spectrum of continuity in resistance movements, again, continuity between civilians and actual fighting forces. That's us. We are going to control three regions on the map, each consisting of three different villages, as you see there. And so you can also have a look at the map. I say map because I'm used to reviewing uh, war games that come with paper maps. Of course, this is a board, a mounted board, and looks very nice. Three regions, three villages each, and these regions will always be in play. The villages and the regions will be split among different players depending on number of players. If you're playing solo like I did, then you control all regions, all villages. You still think of the regions as separate for the purpose of some game effects such as moving from one to the other. So that's us. That's, uh, uh, that's us, the fighters trying to uh, out, uh, outlive and outlast the French. And the French forces are controlled by an AI represented by this deck. You will shuffle it at the beginning of the game. And then from time to time the French player, the French AI will take a turn. Then you will reveal a card that will tell you how many new troops are received by French armies. And also, the French armies will move along these paths. These symbols are used to help them decide where to go when there are uh, forks in the road. As for the number of, of units that are added to that army, well, you got three armies that can potentially be in play, represented by these boxes here. When new units are received, like in the case I just showed you, that card told us that the French received four carabiniers. Uh, you take the corresponding cubes for that force and you place them in the box of the lowest numbered army, one, two, or three, lowest number army that has not deployed yet. Each army, as you can see from the text in the box, has a number of units that they are gathering before they actually, before they actually deploy. So army one, will deploy when there are six or more units present, not yet. If later there is six, six or more, the cubes stay here, but a token representing that army goes on the board uh, and enters from the location indicated there. These locations will change from game to game so that the armies will attack you from different directions. And suppose the army one is indeed ready to attack from this location here. Then we place the corresponding token there and that's when they will start moving trying to reach our villages and now this army again imagine that this army has enough to be deployed when reinforcements are given to us by the AI deck then they'll go here and when this army is deployed they'll go there and so on and so forth uh, you may notice that he said that the French will activate from time to time because the number of times in which the French AI takes a turn depends on how hard the players want the game to be. And, and of course, you follow the instructions on the rulebook to set that element. So as for us, uh, the, the fighters, uh, the resistance, uh, the game is a deck building and set collection uh, game. So each player will have a starting deck representing, as you can see, a number of civilians coming from different paths of lives, being at different stages of their life, from young men to men, young woman, youth, elderly woman, elderly man woman, child, and so on and so forth. We have an artisan here. Um, and it's an end, a deck building game, so you'll start with a basic deck, and then during the game you will acquire more cards. And that is the those are the cards that you're allowed to buy and add to your deck during the game. They will give you different effects, and uh, some of them will also give you units. So when you require when you acquire a mujahideen, then you will get a white cube representing that mujahideen that goes on the board. The sharpshooter will give you a yellow cube representing that unit, and you will place it in a village. Uh, units again are represented by cubes. 
and there is a number of them. Defenses are represented by these purple cylinders. If you acquire the card, then you get to build them. Those will slow down the enemies. And so, uh, you acquire those cards and you put them in your deck. Shuffle, 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 get a hand of cards, use those cards during your turn, and so on and so forth. Now, I said it's a deck building and set collection because this this game, different from other uh, deck building games, gives you a lot more control over the cards that you get each turn than pretty much most or maybe any other deck building game I've ever seen. It really is a combination between, you know, getting cards into your deck and out of your deck and forming sets that will be available to you. Now, each location on the map, each village on the map, on the map, we saw those corresponds to a card, and the player controlling those that village will have the card in front of themselves. So, if I'm the player controlling the region with these three villages, I have these three cards in front of myself. If you're a solo player, then you control all villages. Controlling a village means that uh, there may be some effects uh, that apply during combat. For example, uh, defending Mechla means I don't have to worry about, uh, about uh, French cavalry. They cannot attack there. Uh, I may also begin the game with some specific resources, such as, in this case, reroll tokens. Uh, and these are those tokens. But the important thing is this, that these villages, not only do they give me specific resources and advantages, they give me a place where I can prepare, where I can hide my Mujahideen, where I can hide my, um, where I can hide my, my weapons, where I can send women to uh, convince other local women to become Mujahidat, which are the, uh, the female warriors uh, represented by red cubes. So again, there is a very interesting tension here between the deck and the cards that they get randomly every turn and the cards that they place there. We'll see how that works. So, on your turn, again, players will take turns and then from time to time the French AI takes a turn. On your turn, when you're the active player, you can take up to three actions from this list here in any order and repeating them multiple times. Then, with the cards that you have in your hand at that point, you can spend symbols to acquire cards from the from the market. And basically, the symbols that you can use to acquire cards are these one here. Influence, uh, military strength, uh, food. Yes, there's quite a number of currencies that you have to keep. You have to keep straight. You have to uh, learn to recognize. And yes, acquiring a card, and this is the cost of a card, means to have access to quite a number and quite different combinations of resources. But again, you're not at the mercy of the random draw of the deck, as in so many other deck building games. So, for an action, you can simply play a card, you put it in your discard pile, and you do what the card says. In this case, for example, I could move a Mujahideen unit from one unit from one of my villages to another village. And I can even move one card from my discard pile to the top of my deck. So the young man is there coordinating and helping the Mujahideen move from region to region, which they wouldn't be able to do uh, normally. Um, I can discard this card to move a sharpshooter. Now the man is helping the sharpshooter move around. If I place this card in a village, the player gains a reroll token. So for example, to play this card, I can choose to put her in this village here, and I gain a reroll token. So what the card does uh, when you play to use its ability depends on what you do. The reserve action, and to me this is really the linchpin of the game. This is what makes this game so different from other engine building games, um, uh, deck building and engine building games, yes, that I play. For an action, you can place one card in a village. Well, alright, suppose I have a Mujahideen in my hand and I decide to place the Mujahideen there. And for an action, I can also play, again, for an action, I can play a card in a village, place a card in a village. And support, I also have weapons in my hand, or in a later turn, I have weapons in my hand, I decide to also place that for an action. Or, by taking the reserve action, I can retrieve all cards from one village. Again, this is super mega important, because some of these cards that I showed you 
to bind the market. As you can see, they require a lot of stuff and they you may not get that in your hand. So turn after turn, you are storing your resources in the village and that is the, the set collection element in my opinion. Because then again, for an action, you can retrieve those cards and then they are in your hand. So the reserve action really is what gives you so much control. So you wanna buy something expensive, maybe over a couple of turns, you're storing resources gradually from your hand into villages using the reserve action, and later in a single turn, you retrieve all cards from one village. Mobilizing allows you to move any number of Mujahideen and sharpshooters from one of your villages to another one of your villages, so within the same region. Mujahideen and sharpshooters. The Mujahidats, which are the female warriors, they don't, they don't move that way. Uh, they don't mobilize. Ambush, again, this will only include the sharpshooter, the sharpshooters and the Mujahideen. The Mujahidats redefend the village, but then they don't go out there attacking, ambushing enemy armies. You discard a weapon and a Mujahideen or a sharpshooter card from your hand to ambush. And that's why. And that's why when I started playing the game, I'm like, when am I ever going to get the Mujahideen and a weapon in the same hand? That's too much luck there. Unless I prepare. I prepare people. I send people to the, Mujah the Mujahideen in a village waiting for weapons. Finally send them in the weapons. And when they're ready, then I can send them out with the reserve action. I take it into my hand and then I can perform the ambush action. And I play them and I can perform the ambush. The ambush means that... Uh, the units will temporarily go out and attack and attack an army on the board. And again, these are the main actions, but as you can see, and, and then again, and then I can purchase cards. But trust me, you're not going to be able to ambush much. You're not going to be able to buy a lot if you don't become very familiar with the uh, reserve action, which you will take a lot. So... We take actions to bring units on the board uh, again. Suppose that after a while we do have we do have some Mujahideen in here. We do have some Mujahidat. We even have a sharpshooter. How lucky is that? And then from time to time we got a fight. Again, there are two. And suppose we have an enemy army that is coming this way. Um, that is coming from here. There you go. The enemy army is coming. Now, there are mainly two ways in which you fight. One, you perform the ambush action and then you're sending out your sharpshooters and your, um, your Mujahideen to fight against them. So it's a single round of combat. You're trying to inflict as much damage as possible. Um, and then the survivors will retreat. Or the French are coming because the AI moves them and they're trying to move into a village. Now, sometimes a village will have a defense, in which case they are spending units, sappers, if they have them, sappers are very good at removing your defenses, otherwise they're losing other units, and if they can't remove the defenses, then they are slowed down and it takes them longer to attack. But suppose that now we have the real... The real fight. Again, uh, let's start actually with the general idea is this. And again, ambush and village combat are two variants of the same idea. You have custom dice. So you have custom dice and you use different dice depending on who is attacking. So that's that was reminiscent to me of several uh, games by Academy Games in which you have, again, different dice representing how often different units are likely to hit. The game also comes with this player aid that you can use if you want to play with regular dice. So, for example, that tells you that the cavalry die, that the cavalry die, will miss five times out of six, and then once in six hits for two hits. Again, so you can use the custom die or a regular die with that thing there. The carabiniers will hit half of the time, and each time only one time. The artillery will miss. Often, more often than not, but then can hit for one or two hits on the opponent. And also this gives a sense of how often and how hard the Mujahideen, the sharpshooters, sharp and the Mujahidat can, can hit. So it's pretty simple. If it's an ambush, then I will simply roll a die for each Mujahideen and for each sharpshooter involved. 
Look at the hits. This is not bad, but suppose that that was the case. Maybe I want to spend a reroll token. You can use a token to reroll only one die, so the design of the token is a bit counterintuitive, but suppose I do spend a reroll token. And I got a hit, that's better. Um, and then you simply apply those hits. Now in regular combat there is an order in which you will remove enemy units. In an ambush you can ignore it, so that's super important because that's when you know you, you hit them from where they don't expect and then you're taking out their artilleries, for example. After you resolve your hits against the f enemy forces in an ambush, then uh, they get to fire back uh, and and this is usually not too bad when they're counter-attacking is usually not too bad when and then you retreat to a village with your survivors when the enemies are attacking the village is a slightly different procedure because their artillery is fire first then your sharpshooters get to fire and then the main French forces and the main Berber forces will take will will alternate uh, firing at each other until one of them is not there anymore. Hopefully it's the French army that takes enough damage that they decide to retreat. They all have a threshold of when they retreat depending how many units are left. If you see that things are going bad and you don't have any like children and, and youth in that village, then you can retreat. Retreat is an option you can take only once per game, only one player per, per game. Then you move away from the village with your forces, but the village now counts as taken by the enemies. It may also be that they simply destroy uh, everybody that was in that village. In which case, losing a village means losing the whole region, the entire village is associated with it, and the village are taken by the French, they surrender, that player counts as conquered by the French, it's pretty bad. The surviving Mujahideen in that region actually defect to the French, you like turncoats, or turnburn nooses, I guess. Um, so there is that. The players will lose the game if they use the retreat token, so they retreat once and and they lose a village, basically one of the regions is conquered. Or, again, the, fr the, the, so the, the, the actual players, the players win lose by retreating once and getting conquered once or by getting conquered twice. So, losing two regions. And again, the only way to win is to survive long enough to go through the entire deck of enemy AI cards. And if you manage to do so, without losing too many regions or retreating too much, then you win the game. And this is an overview of how you play the Red Bar News. This game is remarkable, both thematically and, and mechanically. Thematically, well, that's the heart of the thing. The reason why I play games with historical content is because I want to learn more about the topic. And I feel that I learned a lot about this, not just about facts that happen, but about the dynamics, the mechanics of these events, which again is why playing a game about a topic is so much more valuable because you see the procedures behind the events. And again, I, I mentioned this earlier, I can't think of another game that I played about insurgency, about resistance against uh, invading powers that shows the role of the civilians working in conjunction with the actual fighters. I can't think of a game that does that with at such a level of depth, in such a vivid way that really, really comes across. And you can really see... Uh, the old, the elderly man that goes to a village where there already are the Mujahideen and, and game-wise that gives your reroll token means now those Mujahideen are more inspired by the wisdom of this old man or some words of advice or his knowledge of the territory, how the, uh, how the, elder, how the woman goes and recruits the Mujahidat, the female defenders. Again, you can't retreat uh, and leave a village if the children are left behind. How did the man help the fighters move around more efficiently? This interaction, these interactions between the fighters and the civilians and how one helps the other, they, um, they, 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 they um, make each other more powerful and effective. They're all there 
and they're represented through game effects, which is, again, exactly what I want to see in an historical game, not just the theme being represented uh, content-wise, but being made to come alive through the mechanics. This game does that very, very well, and that's amazing. From the point of view of gameplay, also, you have a really nice sense of escalation, because you're seeing these French armies that are building up, they're becoming bigger and scarier, and you're there with, with nothing, with nothing on the board virtually. Well, I got some cards there, I got some tokens, but where are the warriors? Okay, how do I recruit the warriors? Oh gosh, to do that, I need to do that other thing. To do that thing, to acquire that resource, I need to use that thing. It's almost like you're working out a technology tree in a civilization game, to buy this, I need that. But the French don't care, they're just piling up cavalry and artillery and, and, and soldiers. There's that sense of mounting dread is very powerful at the beginning of the game. And later, of course, uh, it, it, it's, it's still there late in the game. It's not as, as, as daunting, maybe, but then you still have, well, we push out, we push back that army. But that other one is coming, so now you're, we're working to move things around to defend against another kind of attack. Um, each loss that you take is pretty tragic because it will take uh, a lot of a lot of work to get those units back. And again, uh, so from the point of view of the architecture of, of the experience, the game also works well uh, to me. Maybe towards the end uh, it can be a little anticlimactic because there are maybe two cards left uh, and you see that the French are not going to make it. But that's not always going to be the case. Mechanically, again, very innovative, very different and unique to me with this huge element of set collection of preparing cards, creating sets there, and picking them up later. To the point that I almost lost the, the deck building element, which I'm not saying as a negative or as a positive, <laughs> just as a neutral thing. I just don't have, I guess, enough uh, processing capacity in there to be building those sets of at the same time to take into account, well, what is left there? That increases my chances of getting this or that card, which of course is the proper engine uh, deck building element. Um, I almost forgot about that. I was working with my sets and then the cards that came out of the deck, I almost felt like they were there randomly. And sometimes I put them in the village, yes, because I don't want them in the deck, but that was secondary. It almost became a game of set collection with the deck building element, at least to me, uh, which again, neither negative nor positive is the way these mechanics work, which felt new and innovative because I don't remember any other deck building that starts with a deck building and then gives you so much power in the kind of sets that you can create. And you really need those because some of those cards, you're unlikely to ever buy them if, uh, if you're just hoping for all the cards to show up in your hand at the same time. And from time to time, yes, oh, sharpshooter and weapons, they came in my hand together so I can launch an ambush. Maybe that's not the time where I want it to be. And so I'm gonna spend two actions to set these two cards aside in a village and peekaboo, they'll come out later. Again, very thematic, very thematic, the idea that an insurgency is not about what happens in the battlefield, but it's about the slow buildup. It's about spreading things out and then getting them all together at the crucial time of the confrontation. Very, very nice, very impressive. Now, uh, because of all of these things, there's a price to pay, and the price to pay is complexity, and it's a pretty steep learning curve. Now, I, uh, I climbed that curve all by myself because I was playing the game solo, and there are a couple of things here and there, such as the rule book. I didn't find it was super clear in some passages, so they feel a bit opaque, uh, but I contacted um, one of the designers, and he was super helpful, replied right away, so I think that... I was able to get the game, I, I hope, correct, to play correctly. Um, but again, that probably can be fixed by, uh, by, by you know, online sources that can clarify things for you. Other thing at the beginning is that uh, reconciling the symbols you see on the cards and the board with the game components. Uh, because I have to remember that the shovel on the French card means orange cube. Uh, I have to remember that the little cylinder on the card means blue cube. Does not mean purple cube, purple cylinder, because that's defenses. So uh, maybe one day we'll have a, a deluxe edition 
with beautifully shaped uh, wooden components so that the defenses will not be a purple cylinder, they will be a brick, which will comport with the fact that on the cars they appear to be a wall. Um, then the blue cylinder will be the carabiniers and that will be so the wooden blue cylinder that goes on the board will look like the cylinder you see on the card. Uh, I hope we can have that. That would be pretty cool. It would make learning the game so much easier. But ultimately, the biggest, the biggest, um, the steepest element of the curve to me was to figure out all of the different currencies and how they work. I often found myself short of like, well, I need a food or I need two more influence. But it's not just that, I'm looking at these cards and you know, this card has two influences and one food. This card has two influences and one tool. This card has one influence and three and three or something else. But there's a text effect that may generate extra influence. So I'm counting around how much influence do I have? Seven. How much, how much meat I might? Four. How much uh, food I have? Two. How many... And by that point, I'm like, wait a second, how much influence did I have? After a while, it becomes more familiar, and at the end, I was able to tell at a glance uh, with maybe some marginal error here and there, but I was able to tell at a glance, yeah, I think I can buy a Mujahideen. Yes, I think I can do that. But, um, again, as a solo player, I didn't mind going through that. I don't think I'm ever going to teach this game to anybody or play with new players, then I don't know that I want to see their scene, you struggling and doing all those calculations and then figuring out how to chain the actions and after a while and you're able to take your turn then I'm seeing this other player going through the same thing. I think that the, 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 the dead time the would be like pretty intense, but hey! You know, if you're in town, friend of mine, you can borrow the copy, play solo, then come here and we can play together. That's fine. I just don't think I'm gonna uh, teach it to new players. I just don't have that, um, I don't know, sense of sacrificing me anymore. But with that caveat, it's not, it, it takes, again, if you're playing the game solo, it just takes a little bit of resi resistance there. You just need to put in some homework. But then the game really makes sense. Then the game feels so rich and thematic and you have all of those great ideas that I, that I, that I mentioned earlier. Then you have the excitement of really getting these people together, launching an ambush, trying to take down their artillery. Then you have all of those other awesome thematic things. You see these people, yes, people getting together, uh, creating a shared identity or reinforcing a shared identity that they feel against an invader. It's a powerful story, it's a tragic and sad story, and it's amazing that a game can give you such a strong feel for that story. There is a learning process, but if you're willing to put in the homework, if you're willing to put in the effort, then I think it is really worth it. Because Red Barnus, Algeria, 1857 is, as I said earlier, and I want to say it again, a remarkable game, both thematically and mechanically.